This is Pastor Richard, and you are watching Anchored in Christ, a vlog from St. Paul's Lutheran Church to know what we believe and why we believe it to be anchored in Christ's word for us. Now, it has actually been several weeks, perhaps a couple months, since the last video of Anchored in Christ here at St. Paul's, namely due to the fact that we have been very busy here at St. Paul's. But nonetheless, we have another opportunity to study God's word this week in preparation for our upcoming Sunday school lessons with our preschoolers all the way up to our fifth grade. And that lesson is this. It's on 1 Samuel chapter 17. As we look at 1 Samuel chapter 17, we hear that very familiar story of David and Goliath. Yes, David and Goliath. And as we look at the story, we are immediately captured by just the absolute, um, the grab of the story of seeing this young shepherd going to battle against this gigantic, huge warrior who is profaning the name of God. Uh, indeed, it's just a wonderful, wonderful story. But in the details of this story, what we need to understand is the cosmic battle that is occurring between David and Goliath. You see, what we have to do is we have to rewind that clock all the way back to Genesis chapter 3. And in Genesis chapter 3, right after Adam and Eve had sinned, God gives that promise of that seed, that one who is coming through that lineage of Adam and Eve, as well as that lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all the way to David himself, that, that seed, which is Jesus the Christ, that he will be coming through that lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and David, and so forth. Now, with that in mind, in Genesis 3, we also see God saying that there will be enmity, that is war, between the offspring of Adam and Eve and also uh, the devil himself. Indeed, there's going to be a war between that lineage of the seed of Jesus the Christ as well as that evil one, Satan himself. And so when we look at David and Goliath, what we see here is a cosmic battle between the promise of God given all the way back in Genesis 3 confirmed to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the book of Genesis, as well as the rest of the Israelites. Continuing all the way to David, we see a battle between the promises of God to bring salvation through the Messiah and the devil working through his cohorts, namely Goliath, to destroy this promised lineage, this promised seed. And so when we look at the story, indeed, it is definitely a wonderful story of David by faith uh, standing up to this great giant. But more specifically, it is a battle of Jesus to destroy that promised Messiah. I have a note I'd like to read uh, written in my study Bible that comments on this. It says this, David and Goliath is a battle between the seed of the woman, as we talked about in Genesis 3, and the seed of the serpent, <laughs> a battle which results in its climax in Jesus' victory over Satan's first with death, and second with the resurrection. So what we see here is a battle between David and Goliath that, <clears throat> excuse me, that actually sees its fulfillment in Christ stomping on the head, crushing the head of the serpent uh, through that cross as his heel is bruised, as we hear back in Genesis 3. Now thinking of this too, a couple other things here. When we think about David and Goliath, uh, the wonderful promise is this, is that David... Uh, by faith uh, took on this Goliath because he knew the promises of God. He had faith in God and to provide for him. And we also know that the Lord, when he makes a promise, as he did in Genesis 3, and as he confirmed that to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that the Lord God does not break his promises. So the very fact is this, is if David would have died, guess what? No seed, no son of David, no Jesus. So really, when we look at it, did, did, did Goliath actually stand a chance against David? Absolutely not whatsoever. And as we know in the story, it's just a wonderful story where the stone is thrown and David actually, man, he hits the dirt. And then what does David do? He comes over. I'll show you this picture. It's just remarkable. David comes over uh, right after uh, Goliath uh, hits the ground and he takes Goliath, uh, his sword, and he chops his head off. I just love this picture here. I have this on my screensaver here of David taking on that great Goliath, showing the promises of God, Genesis 3, Genesis 12, all the way through uh, the book of Genesis, the promises of Jesus that nothing can overcome the promises of God given to us, that salvation would be accomplished through this lineage that God had promised and also accomplished through Jesus Christ on that cross, that even Satan could not overcome uh, the, the death of Christ, that Christ stomped on the head of Satan. Uh, he tasted our sin. He made full satisfaction for our sin. And then he rose again on the third day. So Sunday school teachers, as you teach this, uh, again, we can teach that story of David and Goliath, but we also want to bring it to that cosmic reality that this is a fight between uh, the Lord himself and Satan who wants to seek to kill and steal and destroy the promises of God for us 
it's a battle that still exists today where the evil one wants to come after us to kill and steal and destroy our faith. But we rest in the sure security of the promises of God that when God makes a promise, he will not forsake those promises. Uh, he stayed true to that promise in preserving David and overcoming Goliath. He stayed true to that promise of Christ coming and dying and resurrecting for us. He stays true to that promise that he will indeed come back for us someday yet again to take us home unto himself where we will have no more tears, no more sin, no more pain, no more life under this veil of tears. So I hope that helps and we'll catch you next time.